Hello and welcome to another episode of Finance and Fiction and today we will take a look at the reason for why Eins Ulgaun struggled to make money. But before we do so I say thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. Now before the Sorcerer Kingdom came to be and the Undead Labor Force took over, being employed in friendly or frightened nations, usually they were both to do hard, manual and repetitive labor such as mining, laying bricks, pulling carts or plowing the fields, all Einzulgaun had was the many many million gold pieces in his treasury vault to pay everybody. While normally this wouldn't be a problem, with the great tomb of Nazarick removed from Yggdrasil and tossed into the new world, there was no new gold coins being thrown into the treasury vault, because Einzulgaun had been removed from valuable loot drops, means that in a couple of millennia, Nazarick's funds might actually be in danger of running dry. So in order to prevent this, Nazarick had to cut cost by for example deactivating some gold coin consuming weather effects in the Great Tomb or by actually starting to farm on the 6th level, providing fresh ingredients for Nazarick's drinks and cocktails. All of this was done in order to keep at least a neutral income and spending balance, so that the Great Tomb of Nazarick could endure for eternity. But this also left Eins with another problem. While the normal Yggdrasil gold coins were twice as valuable as normal ones, it was also quite obvious that they weren't from around this part of the new world. And especially after the Shalti incident, they would draw some unwanted attention onto the very persons currently operating covertly outside of Nazarick's safe embrace. Additionally, Einzelgaun viewed the treasury vault not as his own personal pleasure fund, but as the guilds and by extent also his friends money, and therefore was very very reluctant to spend any of it, unless the situation like during Shalti's resurrection absolutely required it. But luckily for him, or rather due to his immense intellect and foresight, Einzelgaun chose to masquerade as Momon the Adventurer, and he dragged Nabral Gamma as Nabe along with him, who tried to space out and ignore her co-workers for almost the entire workday, because talking to them led to the urge of calling them insect names and wanting to dispose of them in violent ways. Oh, she's just so relatable. Seriously though, while masquerading as Momon, Eins also had to behave like a high-ranking adventurer. Thus he couldn't stay in some tavern, like he did at the start of his career. Therefore, despite monetary problems, he stayed in prestigious high-class mansions and other noble places, which ate into his already shrinking balance. And unwilling to spend even a coin of the considerable amount of gold in his treasury vault, he had to earn money for him and his subordinates in other ways. Because like him, Sebastian and Solution Epsilon were also operating covertly and thus their expenses such as high-class housing or buying new spells needed to be financed by Eins Ulgaun as well. And Eins Ulgaun tried to do it by being an adventurer. Now you might wonder why this is such a problem. After all, Eins Ulgaun is a level 100 magic caster existing on a plane of power unfathomable for normal New World beings, surpassing the so-called evil deities with ease, wiping out a scripture like they are nothing, and in fact to him they were nothing to be afraid of. Same with Clementine and the drunk iron-ranked adventurers. And in his role as Mormon he was quite successful as well. Eins was able to escort Nferia safely. He tamed the wise king of the forest, and got even annoyed how easy it was, and how unintimidating he looks. He also managed to rapidly rise through the ranks after resolving the graveyard incident, slaying the giant basilisk, and obtaining ultra rare herbs from the evil tree in the side stories. He ascended like a rocket, becoming a living, well, not living, but a contemporary legend in mere months. So then, why was it that Einzelgaun in his role as Momon, the legendary adamantite adventurer, struggled to pay expenses to a very relatable degree? And the answer is relatively simple, there are only a finite amount of quests available. And since there are only three whole adamantite adventurer teams in the entire kingdom of Riestais, including Darkness, 
even fewer quests that could offer a significant reward worthwhile the time of an adamantite adventurer existed. After all, there are only so many beasts to slay, pets to name, herbs to collect, and undead to undo, until every problem, every major threat, and every major request is solved. And just like that, Momon had run out of work, and therefore Ein struggled to earn money, to finance the spending of his employees, unwilling to spend even a tiny bit of his considerable gold balance in the treasury vault, Eins for a time had to rely solely on his income as an adventurer, but despite his qualifications and him doing everything to find another job in order to raise more funds, he just couldn't find them. And this affected not only him but also other adventurers who would just walk into the guild, take a look at the board, only to find the old quest from a month ago with little to nothing new added. And even if there was something to do, it probably didn't pay enough to be worthwhile for a high-ranking adventurer. In fact, the only reason why Einzelgaun didn't go bankrupt right then and there is because Demiurge misunderstood Eins and looted all of the stores, stashes and hideouts of the Six Arms during the demonic incursion in Riestais, thus making many, many, many new world coins available to be spent once again and many other things available to be sold. And after this, the plan of founding the Sorcerer Kingdom was put into motion, ultimately relieving Eins from working as Momon and earning money. And even then, part of Demiurge's plan consisted of employing Momon, thus making additional new world currency available to the tomb, alongside the money Shalti had taken from Archer. And after the Sorcerer Kingdom was found and stabilized itself, the streets were safe. Or rather, everything that could potentially be a threat to the Sorcerer Kingdom and the subjects of Ainz would have been wiped out. And with crime almost non-existent, and all monsters slain, not only was Momon put out of a job, but every other adventurer as well. And while he found a job, the reformation of the Adventurer Guild from a monster hunter mercenary organization to an actual explorer and discoverer guild, something actually worth the name Adventurer, was extremely necessary for its survival in Irantel. Because while there were no more monsters to hunt, the Sorcerer Kingdom still craved knowledge of the rest of the new world. And therefore the newly reformed Adventurer Guild found a similar, but also very different purpose. But then, eventually all of the world will have been explored, mapped and absorbed into the Sorcerer Kingdom. And then the guild might have to change again, in order to stay alive. So in conclusion, job opportunities, even in the new world of Overlord, are limited, as are the amount of money to be made by any job, before one runs out of reasons or resources to do this job. And with this said, I say thank you very much for watching, and special thanks to... Adam J. Al Capone. Andy. Angel of Death. Bad Guy Yi. Boyzilla. Chrissy. Diabetic Centaur. Dystopia. Elika Birch Leaf. Faili Skatis. Feral Shivan, Gigafight, Ghost of Epicness, Hector Morino, Black Phoenix Emperor, Hoss, Jason, Kleinator, Chromius, Large, Lord Touch Me, Lord Ulbert Elaine Oddle, Lou says Ollie, Lex is Fox, Majima, Matt, Matt C, Marcos, Mr. Shoes, Mindless Rav, Minu 13, Mirtis, Inferior's Potion, P 
Primus 11, Sasuga 1 Summer, Sebastian, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Search, Sparkly Unicorn, The Orc Warboss Rock Ed Smasher, Vash Hawk Eye, Zogo Bane of a Lord, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day. Over and out.